how's your weekend going? Not bad. Thanks for asking. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the first weekend of February. This is Saturday the 4th. Now, we're not going to do anything much different on this show than we do through the week. We're going to be looking at hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that have quote unquote potential. What's my definition of potential? A stock that has not run and shown its colors yet. I'm looking for stocks that have a heated chart, that have lingering news, that is to say a catalyst ahead of us so that we can be there before it runs and we can be the ones picking up those big gains. Those are the type of stocks we're looking at and all of them are penny stocks. That is to say none of them are over $5 doesn't matter what market they're on, OTC, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, that's all fair game. As long as they're under five bucks, they are a penny stock. Now, I like trading the major exchange stocks, lots of benefits to it, no trading fees there. You can trade pre-market, after-market, lots of money up there. But I like to trade OTC too, despite the downfalls. We got a lot of opportunities down here with startup companies, new technologies, and these silly low prices where you can just move a smidge and make 100, 200% gains. So I do a lot of research in both arenas, but I like this site particularly for the OTC stocks. This is the otcmarkets.com website. I do all my initial research here. Most of it is done well. Matter of fact, all that news right there, that comes from this site. Right there is the link to it. News comes in all day long. As it's coming out, I get it all right here. Not one piece of news do I get from Google about an OTC stock. Cross my heart, it all comes from here. That saves me a lot of work right there. And of course, I'm getting my share structure, my financials, my filings. Why? Because the SEC and FINRA update this particular site, and I don't know of any other one, every single day for every OTC stock. It's a gold mine of information. Swear to God, start here. You'll find research is a lot easier, saving you time and frustration. All right, don't have to do any refreshing since this is Saturday. I've been all over this site. These were our final numbers on Friday. Nothing to get too excited about. We still aren't reaching that $2 billion volume. We want 10 billion share volume. Yeah, we're less than 50% of that. And our trades, we're stuck between 250 and 300,000 trades. Nothing's changing here. We're lucky we know how to do our research and our due diligence so we can find those kernels that are just about to pop. We're starting to recognize the wiggle just before they go boof. <laughs> I've got a few wiggle pops to show you right now. Come on. Oh man, I got nobody to blame but myself for this. First wiggle pop we're gonna take a look at is American Rebel Holdings. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ, but the truth of the matter is we're not gonna be looking at the common stock, we're gonna be looking at the warrant. The ticker for the warrant is A-R-E-B-W. Now let me get this out of the way before I forget. American Rebel Holdings Inc. is a fully reporting wholesale and retail sales company of safes, and concealed carry apparel and backpacks based in Lenexa, Kansas and Nashville, Tennessee. They make all these great jackets and backpacks and gun racks, all these places you can put your gun, conceal it, keep it safe. Speaking of safes, they make safes for guns as well. And then they started getting recognition for those safes, the quality that they were making them. So they started making bigger safes and then bigger safes. And now they've just made a deal with a safe company and they're making a lot of money just selling safes. They're getting a lot of recognition and business right now. And there are some other telltale signs that can have this thing running. And I'm gonna share all of that with you here in just a few minutes. So the warrant itself, she finished the day at about seven cents with 36, 37 percent gains. The company's common stock finished the day at 24 cents. So the warrant is about one fourth the price of the stock. And the stock only got mm, three percent gains today. So the warrant went up 12 times more than this did. That's why I like to play warrants. The stock goes up a little, the warrant goes up a lot. Not in every case, but in a lot of cases. Now, this price, it is real close to the warrant. It's too low. This is a major exchange stock. They've got what they call a minimum bid price requirement. You cannot be under a dollar for too long. If you are, they'll threaten to throw you off the major exchange down to the OTC market. 
and it costs a lot of money and it's a lot of work to get back up onto the NASDAQ, not to mention what it does to the company's reputation. So nobody wants to do that. So right now the company's at 23 cents. Has she been down there too long? She has. I jumped into a filing. <laughs> now I'm surprised what too long is. I thought too long was six months. They say here that the company was under a dollar for 33 consecutive days. That's it? 33 days, just a little over a month and you're threatening to kick them off? Boy, they don't pull punches up there on the major exchanges. They nitpick. So they were given a six month extension to get the price over a dollar. They have to get it over a dollar, close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. If they do, they're out of hot water, everything's great, they can start over with the whole process again. If they don't, they've got up until June 26th of this year, and if they don't have it taken care of by then, they will be down on the OTC market. The price will plummet on this stock, the price will plummet on the warrant, and you'll probably get yourself a dead cat bounce. Boink, poof. So yeah, you can make money on that bounce after it falls hard. It'll bounce once, you gotta get out before it bounces twice because the second bounce is a long ways down the road normally. So she does have a little bit of problems here. She's got about, what, five months to get that problem resolved. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, we're gonna look at the warrants, not the common stock. So relative volume around the warrant. She's normally doing 10,000 shares a day. Now. If this was a stock, I'd say she's under the radar, but 10,000 shares for a warrant is pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of warrants that run thousands of percent on less than 10,000 shares, so that's not bad at all. What I notice here is she's dropped. She's dropped about 66% down to 3.6 thousand shares. Well, folks, that's under the radar. This is what we're looking for. People have turned their backs and are not paying attention anymore. What does Warren Buffett say? Love what people hate, hate what people love. This is not getting any love right now. Let's show it our love. Share structure, there are no shares for warrants. We don't have to worry about that. Isn't that nice? The company's financials, we should worry about that. Okay, we see they've been increasing from 100,000 to a half a million to 1.2 million. Eh, at the end of 2021, they did almost a million. You're going, where are you getting those numbers from? We got three zeros you got to put behind any of the numbers down here. Now it makes sense, right? <laughs> now taking a look at their quarterly, this is where the game changer steps in, folks. Hundreds of thousands every quarter. You know, a couple hundred thousand. But look at this last quarter in September of 2022. $4.1 million. That is a huge increase from 330000 yeah, about 1,200%. You're talking 12 times her normal income in just three months, not a year. I'm telling you, they're doing good business with these safes. They're more expensive than backpacks. They're making more money with them. Disclosures. I don't know if we have any new disclosures here. Oh, yeah, yeah, we've got an 8K. This 8K correlates to the news. I might as well just take you over to that news. So, this company is owned, the CEO is basically a celebrity, though I've never heard of him. His name is Andy Ross. It says he's had a lucrative career in reality TV and country music, which has brought him to his American Rebel brand in 2015. Ross spent 10 years hosting Maximum Archery World Tour on the Outdoor Channel. He began creating music for the TV show, which launched his career in country music with his brand of patriotic Southern rock and country. The company currently has its products in approximately 400 stores nationwide and has eight company owned stores. American Rebel saw expanded growth in the third quarter. Revenues rose to 4.1 million compared to just 0.3 million the previous year. So that is a huge, huge jump, folks. The increase is largely attributed to the Champion acquisition, which was closed July of last year. Now, we're not going to jump into it much. I just want to show you here. This came out August of last year. American Rebel Holdings completes acquisition of Champion Safe Company, solidifying a leading position in safe industry. Right there, they tell us. Acquisition expected to add approximately $20 million in revenues to American Rebel. That is $5 million a quarter. 
that's what they're talking about and we just seen the first quarter was just under 5 million it was 4.1 okay it was under 5 million but that's where all the money came from this deal so they're in motion now they're making more money and the stock and the warrant haven't totally responded yet which is why i think this is a good time to look at it american rebel will be showcasing their champion safes Superior safes, American Rebel safes, American Rebel 2A lockers, a new line of e-bikes, I didn't know they had that, and more, in the SHOT Show. Uh, they tell us here that the SHOT Show is shooting, hunting, and outdoor trade show expo. Ross is excited to elevate the American Rebel recognition at that show. And he probably knows his business. He's been here for quite a while, a decade. And he's made himself a name. And obviously, they make a real good safe. Boy, did you see those revenues jump. All right, let me show you the chart and show you what sort of jump I expect there. You know what's happening. We're over here at Thinkorswim, my free trading platform. You get it just for signing up for a free account at TD Ameritrade. So we are looking at American Rebel Holdings. Let's take a look at the common stock first so you can see how she's not doing as much as the chart is for the warrant. This is our six month, four hour chart. She's been coming downhill. That 200's gotten close to the price many times. She's been trying to break out had a breakout about five, six days ago, has been sitting very firmly on her 250 day SMA. And right now she is trying to push up. She is showing some strength, which is good. When the stock rises, there's good cause for the warrant to rise as well. Just taking a quick glance at that 20 day, one hour. All right, as I said, she really doesn't show a lot of potential. She's going sideways right now. And that's all you pretty much see. So let's take a look at that warrant. The warrant is a little different. I'm going to go back to that four hour view. Matter of fact, let's go all the way back a year so we can see what our 52 week high is. We're at 79 cents there. We hit a low here at uh, looks like the very last day of December. We hit a penny and right now we are at seven cents coming down to that six month, four hour view. So in the six months, we hit a high of 30 cents, but that was short lived. That was way up there and right back down real quick. This resistance support line, you can see she hit her high here. She hit it there. This is the standard high right there. And that is sitting at about 17, 18 cents right there. And we are at seven cents. So to get from where we are up to there is about 250% gains. She's been falling all this time, hitting that low bubble. And you can see she has been working her way slowly up over that 50 day SMA, which she surely wanted over. Look how often she beat her head on that. She was trying and trying, finally got a good stab through it here, and then just walked on through. Got real excited, had a nice party here, jumped from about uh, three and a third cent up to nine and a half cents. You're looking at 300% gains right there. And that looks to be aftermarket. We'll have to get a bit closer. But she continued to run, and then she has poked through the 200 twice now. Once there, once there. I don't expect the first breakthrough to be the run, the surge, and the second one could be, but the third one and the fourth one, that's where all of your odds change. Third and fourth, you can normally see a good run if she's been showing consistency wanting to get through. Our technicals, our PPO is real strong, pushing up for the last four days. Same with the MACD, looks real good. RSI, we're at 54 right now, a bit tempted. And the volume is real low today, right? Real low. She dropped from 10,000 shares a day to 3.5 thousand shares. 20 day, one hour view. All right, she has been going sideways, rolling a little bit on her 50 day SMA, but pretty much hanging around there. Had this huge bounce from that three and a half cents up to that nine and a half cents. Hitting that high right here, this is one of our support lines. I've got a couple of them drawn there. One at that 17, one at about 12 cents, and one at 10 and a half cents. We're at seven and a half cents. Now look, we've got a 200 day SMA that just came on the board. Where was the price? Way down here. What do you hear me say all the time? When a new SMA comes onto the board, we can normally see the price gravitate to it, whether the price is high or low. Well, look. It was right there, went right to it, stepped up on top of it too much at one time, came back down, settled on her 50 day SMA, but that was a very good punch. She really got up there and she's done it again. 
Now that is two punches through this 200. I would expect a third one to be a takeoff. Our technicals are good on the PPO, our percentage price oscillator. That is akin to the MACD. They're in the same family, read them the same way. The difference, MACD uses the whole price, the PPO, percentage price oscillator <laughs> works with the percentage of the price that's right so the price looks good here she's above that 50 above her 20 just tagged her 20 and is sitting on that 200 day like she's just getting ready to run five day five minute view so there's our 20 day it is the strongest no it's not the strongest sma on the board we got a 50 day sma now using the same logic as we just spoke about on the last board I would expect us to gravitate to the new SMA, which means now it's going to come down. Right now we are at seven cents. This SMA is down here at ooh, let's call it four and a half cents. It's possible this could drop, you know, two and a half, three cents. It could. Now I think this is going to run. I think something is going to cause this thing to take off from what we've been seeing. All those revenues, the next financial comes out, they say we've done 1,000% increase over the last, you know, boom! Well, you want your best price. You wanna be able to triple, quadruple, and a thousand times four rather than six. So what I'm saying is, I would watch for this to drop down to this area around here, the four and a half, uh, under five under five and I would pick up my position down there now because we are playing warrants we're not talking big positions we're talking fifty a hundred dollars maybe two hundred dollars at the most why do I say that you're thinking man you know how much money we could make when it doubles triples quadruples goes a thousand percent yeah I know but think about it this way it only did ten thousand shares in an entire day you don't want to be owning 20,000 shares trying to unload them all, trying to make your profit. Keep, <laughs> keep the framework of the play within the framework of the stats on the stock itself. Our technicals still got heat. We are still pushing up here. We've got a crossover right now on the MACD. I like that. And our RSI has been climbing one point from four hour to one hour to five minute, from 54 to 55 to 56. I'd keep my eye on the warrant for AREBW, American Rebel Holdings. You could watch the stock as well. Maybe you don't like to trade warrants. I don't know why. There is no difference. You don't have to worry about it being a warrant. You know, that's just its name. Common stock has no name. We just call it stock. This is a warrant stock, but you can get into it and get out of it when you want. If you play them right, you know, low volume and all and liquidity. So there is a warrant that isn't even attached to a SPAC that can make us some money in a short amount of time. All right, no more wiggle pops. <laughs> the next ticker we're taking a look at is ticker AFFU, Affluence Core. Now, Affluence has not had any new news come out here recently or filings. However, they did have a news press come out back in November. Lingering news by all means. They made a deal, a partnership with a huge Fortune 500 company. Now, at that point, the revenues were starting to grow. And I think this is going to help their revenues grow even more. So that's why we're looking at Affluence. So on Friday, Affluence finished at almost four cents with practically 21% gains. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got these two green ticks I tell you to always look for, especially if you're in it for a long period of time, a transfer agent verified and a verified profile. There is a lot of information being represented by these two green ticks. Information being verified and validated behind the scenes by the OTC markets. They do that. And if you're in a pink, you want as much validated information as you can get. So that's reassuring. Now, if you're just going to be in this for a day trade or a quick swing, don't worry about this. You're not in it long enough to really affect you. So what does Affluence do? Well, I've got a description here. It's the same description they put in all of their news presses. And it's okay, but it really isn't about the company. It's about their subsidiary. We're going to read more about them in the news. But the description for the company says that Affluence Corporation is a diversified technology company focused on innovative software solutions that capitalize on the Internet of Things artificial intelligence, and 5G technologies. We are investing in mid-market businesses to create a cohesive unit which brings together technology for the next generation of the internet. 
So they are a holdings company. They buy other companies that fit into what they're already doing. So what was the relative volume around the company on Friday? A little more interest went from 347,000 to 511,000. So we see a small amount of people adding up here. Nothing big yet. The crowd hasn't come running in. We're looking at this at a good time. Share structure for the company. All right. I would normally go to the unrestricted shares. I figure any share that's on the market is the float. Well, they tell us that's 71 million. Here they tell us the float over a year ago, about a year ago, was 10 million. Well, I'm not sure what it is. Well, lucky thing, when they have pinks, they put out disclosures. This is just information the management passes off to us. And normally, you can find the float in a disclosure, but you can't find them in the 10Ks and the 10Qs. Those are the audited financials by CPAs. They just don't put it in there. So I went and looked this one up. They tell us that the public float is 37.9 million. Over here, they said 71 to 10 not even close. That's why I like to look it up because I, it's the one thing on this site I just can't seem to get right, but I get a feeling that's more about the information they're fed. So we're looking at 37 million on the float. Financials for affluence. All right, you can see they've been increasing from 2019. They had zip. 2020, they hit $200,000 and almost a million dollars in 2021. What about 2022? 2022, just the first three quarters, they're already up 50% what they were doing, $1.5 million. So their revenues are growing right now before this deal really even took place. All right, let's see what we've got here for disclosures. Can't remember if we had anything to look at here or not. No, that's why I didn't remember. They got no SEC filing since 2008. I always find that concerning because SEC filings show you activities of the company. Are they putting more shares out there? Are they making a merger? Are they making an acquisition? Are they hiring or firing somebody? All the activities have to be accounted for. Any insiders buying shares, you got to have filings for them. And they've had no filings here in what? 10, 12, 12 years maybe? Something like that. So that's a little concerning. In any case, let's go check out that news. All right, this is current news. We had a piece come out here in December. Orange Business Services names One Mind Technologies. That is their primary subsidiary making the money right now. One Mind Technologies as best regional partner at its seventh annual partner day. So it's getting recognized for what it does. And this is the piece of news I want to jump into. One Mind Technologies announces strategic partnership with Dell Technologies. Hoorah! They said that One Mind Technologies, a wholly owned subsidiary of Affluence Corporation, has announced today that the company has entered into a strategic partnership with Dell Technologies, ticker D E L L. Under the terms of the agreement, Dell Technologies will incorporate One Mind's hypervisor into a digital city software product. OneMind Technologies is a leader in smart city software and Internet of Things technology. Dell Technologies digital city products will be powered by OneMind. We have been working with Dell on several projects over the last few years, including a big win with the world's largest smart city project and have jointly been increasing our traction on multiple sales campaigns. This partnership with Dell Technologies brings us the global reach of the entire Dell Technology digi Digital City Sales Force and is opening more sales opportunities for us as well as larger opportunities all over the world. Big, 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 world, global, all. Oh, I'm loving this. So, uh, what, what else do they tell us here? Right here. The One Mind Smart City solution is deployed in Barcelona, San Francisco, Guadalajara, and Oslo and many other cities throughout the world. So One Mind is how Dell uses their product. That's what they said right here is that Dell Technologies digital city products will be powered by One Mind. It's a joint venture where you go, I go. And you're going in a lot of places, we're going in a lot of places. So I think this contract, however big it gets, and they're talking about doing more, they've been working together for a while, now they're actually collaborating jointly. I just see that more revenues are darn sure gonna be coming in because of the customer base that Dell Technologies already has.
All right, let's go take a look at this chart. This is another one of those warm charts that led me to the information, right? Ooh, I'm hoping we're not too late to this party. This is a FFU six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble back here in May of five and a half cents roughly. And it was in the end of November. She hit a low of a penny and a half. She's had some nice rides in here, some good jumps and bounces, but she keeps coming back underneath this 200. This time it doesn't look like she wants to come back, does it? You've got bar upon bar upon bar. Now we got a high right there that she has just hit. Bingo, she's hit that one, which is also the same one coming over here all the way across. And I bet you that comes all the way across to here too. Sure does. You see how that works, folks? So she kept hitting it. If she can get over this, there is a very strong possibility we could see new high set here. What was the 52 week high? Uh, nine cents, uh, actually 10 cents. Let's just call that 10 cents. So you're looking at, uh, oh, 150% gains that we could get if she just went to there. But if this Dell contract makes a huge impact, we could go way beyond this. Now, I'm not saying she is. I just don't know how impactful this contract is going to be. It's come on down to that 20 day, one hour view. <laughs> yeah, you got to wonder, are we late to the party? Well, honestly, this is the sign that she's growing. That's the breakout point right there, folks. You can see how many lines we got because we kept finding the further back we went, it was that point on the charts that she kept having a lot of trouble. So she's got to get over this. She hit it and she has fallen back. Uh, no, she hasn't. She is stuck right there. Let's put a pin in it. Let's not move until Monday. She's been riding it all the way up on this nine day SMA, doing pretty good. She's had some small breakouts. Now what concerns me is that she is pulling away from this 20 day SMA. You can't get too far away. All the SMAs, the price to the nine day, they've all got rubber bands attached to them. If they get too far apart, they will snap back together. And you can only hope that they stop the next SMA. So I keep my eye on that. She could hit her head. Doesn't even look like she's had a pullback yet, right? And when you see a high bubble, especially when she's reaching strong vantage points, you'll normally see an abrupt pullback immediately. The very next bar will pull back. And maybe we'll see that uh, on the five minute chart. Our volume here, it's average. It's actually a little lower, but uh, it's been holding everything up and our technicals look good. We've got pushes on everything. Our PPO is pushing up stronger at the end of the day, as is our MACD. Our RSI is just just touching the overbought right now. Everything looks really good on the one hour chart. Let's see that five day, five minute. So she's been running, is that five days ago? Yeah, I guess it is, that is five days. She's been running four, five days solid. She's running from two cents up to four cents. That's a hundred percent gains without a whole lot of trouble. We got some greens, a couple red. Greens, couple red. Greens, couple red. Now, my chart looks like this, folks. I want you to know this because you may want to do what I'm doing. I am using the Heike Ashi. You see right here, the Heiken Ashi. This is your standard candle. Watch the chart. Watch. Look at all the naked spots here. Look at these. And you can't tell, did, did that move up, down? Is there up pressure, down pressure? You just, and when you're trying to draw your trend lines, it's like, where do I actually draw them? Well, your hike and Ashi fills all that in with information from different vantage points. Watch again. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> Let's do it again. We can do this as long as it takes. <laughs> hike and Ashi right there. Doesn't that look better? You've got distinct outside lines. You can tell if those dashes were pushing up or pushing down. Huge difference. Use the hike and Ashi. I think you'll like it, folks. So even on our, uh, that's our 15 minute. Let's come down to our five minute. All right, there's our five minute. So she did have some up and down, rolling and rolling, but look, she's staying above her 20. She came under at once, tagged the 50. That's what your SMAs are there for, to bounce off of. Now there's no magic in the SMAs. It's that all of us investors are watching them. Everybody saw it hit that 50 day. And after not being there for a while, it looked like a good buy-in price. Since it's running, I might as well take advantage of this dip. I didn't miss the whole run. I just missed the 
validation. I see it running. You could catch it. And that's a lot of people call that catching a falling knife. The stock's already run. Why do you want to get into it? It's just going to come back down and you get, you're the one that gets hurt. Well, we're thinking this is going to continue on. We don't think this is a, a spike. It's been running for five days. That's not a surge. That's not a spike. That is growth. She has bounced off for 50 here, bounced off for 50 here. That's two. Shoop, she's off and running. And even on the five minute, we haven't had a pullback. Let me check on the one minute. No. Ended the day on a high bubble. I would expect a pullback right at the bell. So don't be thinking about buying in right here. Watch for the pullback. Watch for it to come back to this 50-day SMA. That's about three and a half cents. That, that'll save you a half a penny. But if you're trying to get the best price, I would look down here. And it might even come a little bit lower like this. But I get the feeling she's not going to fall. Ooh. <laughs> All right. That is a one-minute chart. This is about the only place I will give exception to the price gravitating to a new SMA. Why is that? Because most people, unless they're getting in or out of a chart, won't be watching the one minute. They'll be watching the five minute. <laughs> okay, we've got a situation here, folks. It's on the five minute as well. E gads. All right, so there's where it came in. We had a drop here. Now, this could have been as far as it wanted to go. It said, no way am I going all the way down there just to pay homage to the new SMA on the board. The King's clothes are nice, but I ain't getting anywhere near them. So hopefully that's exactly what that was because that is a huge fall. That's like 50% down. We don't want to see it do that. If it does that, I consider this to be not a play that we should be watching. But as she sits right now, our technicals are pushing up, all of them. Everything is pushing up. If all of your technicals are pushing up, you can't be losing. Ended the day at a high bubble. You see there was a lot of excitement. I would like to know if there's any. Uh, let, let's see here. Open up level two. Nah, we don't have anything in the queue. Unavailable, unavailable. This is my level two. And you can see here the price is $0.04 cents and the ask is $0.04. Cents. Here the bid is... 3.2 up there, the bid is 3.2. And these are the prices that me and you, all of us investors, put in our orders. We want to buy, we want to sell, we put in the order, and you put it in good till canceled, it stays there. Well, somebody could have put one in there for $10 a share, good till canceled. And you're going, ask $10, no way I'm paying $10. But he may have done that to protect his shares from shorters. If your shares are up for sale, even at a ridiculous price, nobody can borrow them. Shorters can't get them. So sometimes you'll see ridiculous spreads during aftermarket hours. Don't trust them, folks. These numbers mean nothing aftermarket unless they're actually trading. All right, let's take a look at another stock. Ooh, this is going to make a lot of people happy. I am constantly getting requests to talk about this ticker. This is DRCR, Dear Cashmere Holdings. Well, now that she's got a warm chart and she's got a ton of lingering news and it looks like there are catalysts ahead, this is a good time to consider Dear Cashmere Holdings. Now, don't get too cozy with that name and that ticker. They're looking to change that as soon as possible. Now, DRCR, they are involved in blockchain, cryptocurrency, and gambling. Very unique combination and they've tweaked it to work. They are now making money doing it. They've got two unique products. They have the Swifty Wallet. The Swifty Wallet is like the wallet you carry in your purse or your back pocket. It's where your money's at so that you can pay for things. Well, the Swifty Wallet's exactly the same thing except it's holding your cryptocurrency so that you can convert any of your cryptos into cash so that you can pay for your groceries but it also allows you to place bets, <laughs> which leads into their second product, their predictive betting app, which is controlled by artificial intelligence. It gets to know you and it acts a lot like Tinder. You'll be in the middle of watching a game and a bet will come up on your phone and it'll say, do you want to bet that this is going to be a home run? Yes or no, swipe right for yes, swipe no for no. And it just keeps doing that, impulse betting. Imagine that. 
How many things have you bought standing in the cashier line waiting to pay for your goods while all these other impulse items are around you? I end up grabbing two or three impulse items myself. I think most people have strong impulses. And gamblers, sports addicts, Come on, folks, this could be huge business. They believe it is gonna be, and it looks like it is. They've already launched it in the UK. But I'll get into more details as we cover the news. There's a lot of little things you need to know about the company because they've been putting brick on top of brick on top of brick, and it looks like they've got a solid wall to create some solid revenues now. So DRCR, she finished the day at about 25 and a half cents with almost 21% gains. Still on the pink tier. It is current, but they've been talking about uplisting for quite a while. And the problem here is we've got both these green ticks, but we need a third one if they're thinking about uplisting. It's called independent directors. You would see that here. You've got to have independent directors if you're going to uplist. You cannot uplist without them. So until they actually have them there, it's all talk to me. Urgh. All right, so what was the relative volume around this company today? Building her wall up and all, not as much as normal. She's normally doing about a quarter million shares a day. Today she had a drop, Friday. <laughs> Anytime I say today, I mean Friday. She dropped down to 153,000 shares. People are taking their eyes off of this right now. Maybe a good buying opportunity. Uh, share structure for DRCR. Um, did I look this one up? No, I didn't. You know what? I'm going to have to look this one up and verify, and it is a pink. Do I have it over here? No, I don't have it over here. Did they actually put it in here? It might be here, folks. Just give me a moment to scroll up here to the top. That's normally where they put the information. I mean, it is a pink, right? So, outstanding shares, outstanding shares, outstanding shares. Well, did I see float right there? See? See, you can count on these pinks to give you what you're looking for. 14.7 million shares in the float. What did they tell us? 20 million unrestricted and a half a million. They ain't even coming close today, folks. So what was that number again? 14.7 million. Not a bad float at all. Financials for this company. All right. Financials aren't looking too great here. At the end of 2021, we had $139,000. Looking at the quarterly to get that 2022 information, we've only got the first quarter here, and it's nothing. It's $105,000. That's why I had this open. All the way down here, let's scroll all the way back down. Down here are the financials up to September, which definitely are better than that $100,000. All right, here's their assets. As of September 30th, 2022, comparing it to the same period of time last year, Last year, they were at $307,000. This year, their assets are $3.8 million. So they've had a huge increase in assets. Liabilities have also jumped from $275,000 to $1.6 million. But they're more than double their liabilities and assets. They are standing strong. Their revenues, they said they did $100,000 in the first quarter of 2022. Well, from July to September, that three-month period, they did $3.7 million. You know how big of an increase that is from $100,000? I'm not even going to try to calculate it. It's huge. It's a giant leap. And this is just up till September. We know December is done, and we know we are now working into a whole new year. So I expect their revenues to be stronger. And you're going to see that representation in the information I share with you from the news. Speaking of news, we got any disclosures over here? No, we got no disclosures. And I've got to say that is a concern. Again, I said this before, SEC filings show you activities of the company. If you don't see any SEC filings, it means they're doing nothing. Now, I know they've been building up their business. They've got a lot of news. I see they've been doing things and maybe everything they've been doing is in the business world and not on the corporate side, you know, the stock side. Because I went out looking, I did a search. There are no filings. I just couldn't find any. These are the filings they've got out there. There are no 4Ks or Form 4s. There are no 8Ks, 6Ks. Kind of strange to me. All right, news. This is where we're going to get a whole bunch of stuff. They've been working. They've got lots of things here. They've been launching their 
apps. They've been getting them on Apple and Google Play. They've been working on licenses. They've been talking about the revenue. So what I've done is I've grabbed four pieces of news here and I've bulleted the important stuff. So the first one came out in March of last year. Uh, DRCR Swifty Global confirms the award of its UK gambling license. Swifty Global is a technology company focused on creating groundbreaking solutions in the financial and sports betting sectors. The company has developed two disruptive mobile applications for sports predictions and digital wallet, which encompass artificial intelligence and cryptocurrency blockchain transactions. Following its award of the Caraco license in November 2021, Swiftly is now pleased to announce that it has successfully obtained its UK gambling license, the coveted UK license. This is the gold standard of one of the most difficult gambling licenses in the world to obtain. Now the Caraco license gives them license in other areas, but that UK license, as they said, that is the gold standard. I lived in the UK for 10 years, folks. Gambling over there is as common as bars are. There is a bookie, two bookies, three bookies in every town. They're clean, they're quiet. There's no problems with gambling. You don't see people hanging out and, you know, bumming 50 cents. It is just big business and there's big companies over there that have been there for a long time that are super duper rich. So if your products can succeed over there, they can probably succeed worldwide. They tell us down here that Swiftly will aggressively target the UK market to rapidly gain a lucrative share of the existing market whilst also creating a new category of gambling with its proprietary swipe technology for micro betting. This will create a new market of users who enjoy a more social, fun, and engaging form of gambling. According to the UK Gambling Commissioner, the UK's online sports betting and casino gambling market was worth six. 0.9 billion pounds between March 2020 and April 2021. This was up 18% from the previous year. Now, despite the size of the UK market, there are only 287 companies that have a remote betting operating license and 469 companies that have gambling software development licenses in the UK. I know that sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. So they've got a very strong position now with the UK license. They've got, got that Caraco license, which gives them areas in most vicinities that don't disallow gambling. It's just easier to say where you're not allowed to go because there's more areas you are allowed to go that accept that license. The next piece of news we got here came out October 3rd. They tell us that during the month of September, Swifty Gaming generated $3.5 million in revenue. One month, folks, one month, 3.5 million in September. This is a small percentage of our current network client database. Swifty forecasted double its monthly revenue to 7 million by December, 2022. We haven't seen that financial yet. So they are telling us right now that these are gonna be huge revenues. That's gonna excite people, people who have been waiting for DRCR to do something. Swifty anticipates delivering an annual revenue run rate of 75 to $100 million, and in the medium to long run term, the company anticipates reaching a billion dollars in annual revenue within the next five years through both organic and acquisition growth. Five years, they plan on hitting a billion dollars a year. Swifty Predictions, a swipe-based, low-value, high-frequency sports betting application, which is developed to use artificial intelligence, offers betting in all major sports and competitions. The user can swipe right in order to place a bet in a matter of seconds or swipe left to skip to the next bet. Betting amounts are controlled by the user but are typically between $1 and $10. The unique offering of the Swifty Predictions app and its proprietary technology could alone achieve a commercial valuation of several hundred million dollars in the near future and potentially over a billion dollars within three to five years. It sounds to me like they're talking about a spin out this proprietary technology on its own could stand by itself. And that's what all companies are looking for. They're looking for ways to spin out companies. It makes them more revenues. The next piece of news we got December 14th. 
Since late July 2022, the company has launched three new products and revenue streams, including a disruptive mobile application for sports predictions in the United Kingdom, a traditional global sports book, and a casino gaming platform. To date, in Q4, the company has already reported almost $15 million in revenue. Each piece of news just keeps getting bigger and bigger. We went from 3.5 million to 7 million to 15 million. We're talking about, you know, generating money in a very quick way. Anything else on that one? No. And the very last piece of news came out January 11th of this year. Uh, we are expecting revenues to reach 100 million in 2023 and Swiftly also recently canceled 10.6 million of its common shares. So they brought that share count down to a nice low float of about, what was it? 14.7 million is what, what we found it to be. So they've got a nice low float. And what we really like about that is that they don't have any wiggle room, <laughs> wiggle, wiggle room to do a reverse split. So we don't have to worry about that, but the price is starting to climb. They are on the pink. We don't see any independent directors, which says they aren't going to uplist here anytime soon. If they wanted to uplist to the QB, They've already reached a minimum price of a penny, but if they want to get to the NASDAQ, they got to be $3. And to do that, they would have to kick this up, what, uh, for 12 times, which would give us a, a float of about 1.4, something like that. So they could do it if they wanted to, and then you'd end up with a micro float, 1.4 million. And you have to have at least a million in the float to be on the NASDAQ. That's cutting it close. All right, let's go take a look at this warm chart for DRCR. Let's take a look at Dr. CR. DRCR. <laughs> this is a six month, four hour chart for it. And she looks like she's just kind of been hanging out here in the center, even had a big fall and then a big rip. So what I'm going to do, because it's a bit messy to read, I am going to grab my regression channel. And folks, I suggest you use this as often as you can. It's one of the easiest tools you can use. Look, I'm going to show you how easy this is. You see this red mark right there? I want to start there because it's a low spot. But I'm going to go all the way up here and I'm going to poke right there. Look at that. Put it right where it actually needed to go, right? Now I'm going to keep my cursor up here at the top, but I'm going to drag that. And look, it goes exactly where it needs to go. An algorithm controls it. Boom. I'm way the heck up here and it laid it perfectly. I didn't have to know nothing. I didn't have to look for the bottoms or look for the tops. That is a perfect algorithmic regression channel. Now, what I like about this is it's got a 50% mark. Halfway up, halfway down. It's important. We want to see things halfway up to feel that they have a better chance of growing. And we look for bounces inside this. But what you notice, you can't really see it, but it is gradually growing. It is on a steady incline up. Not strong, but it is happening. Now, the volume's gotten real strong here in the last month, I would say. Look at here. Once she hit that low, she got extreme, fell out of the channel, pushed herself back into the channel, sat on that bottom lip, right on top of it, and then beelined out. She was in a mood for a breakout, broke across that 50% mark, broke out of the channel at 27 cents and went to 43 cents. So you had about an 80% run here. From back here, You've got yourself 250%, close to 300% gains right there. Now, I want you to see where she's hitting her head. Right here, let me grab the right line for you. She's already broken. That is her absolute high here. Now, let's see if there's a higher point one year back. Is she expecting something back here? Nope, that is it right there. So I'm going to come back in on that six month and I'm going to zoom in here. So she's hitting her head on that very strong resistance and she's done it four times, which is really surprising to me. One, two, three. I would have anticipated since she came down, she fell after hitting her head with a safe fall. A safe fall is landing on your nine day SMA. That's as thin as a cracker. You can go through that so easily, but it didn't. It stuck up there. So I would have thought the third one would have been a charm. It wasn't. Gave it one more heave ho and it failed. Lost all enthusiasm, it was falling all the way back. 
but not all the way back. This is the bottom of our channel where she was sitting. She went all the way up and fell back and landed on the next step up. That's the best landing you're going to get after a fall, to be higher than you started. And right now she is sitting above that 200 on that regression mark, the 50% mark. So what I'd be looking for here is my next green bar. But we're on a four hour chart. I'm not trading on a four hour chart, but I am expecting a bounce right here. She's underneath the 50 and underneath the nine. Hopefully our closer charts look a little better. We have had a lot of fall. You can see everything's been coming down, but we're looking for an entry. We're looking for a stock that's under the radar. This is perfect timing. You've seen the excitement. You know the money they're gonna make. She's falling back down. Look, if somebody puts something on sale at the store, do you consider it cheap? because it's been put on sale? No, it's a bargain. This looks like a bargain to me. Let's take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. All right, nice. So we started here at 17 cents, ran to 43 and a half cents, fell back to our 50 day SMA, bounced on that real hard. We had two green bars, three green bars, and she leveled off on her 20 day SMA. I like that. She's pushing herself up to lighter and lighter SMAs. That's how you get climb. Get off of those heavy SMAs, weighing you down, get on something light. She then got on top of her nine. Look how big those price bars got when she got up off of that 20. The smaller the SMA underneath her butt, the more she wants to run. And then she crashed here and came all the way down. She has broke through the 200 day SMA like a rubber ball underwater and she's trying to come back up onto the surface right now. She's just, just now getting on top of her nine. You cannot climb until you're on the nine. So looks like she's going to make that move all at once. She's going to jump onto the nine up on top of the 20, up on top of the 200. Our technicals are turning around. Our PPO is coming back up over that pink line. Our MACD has already had her crossover. RSI is at 48. It is a bid tempted. It looks like a good time to consider this. This is where we expect her to start pushing up again, start getting up out of that channel. And if she can break this resistance right here, there's no telling what can happen. So the financials come out. Doesn't matter which one. Or a news press talking about the financials. They throw some big numbers out there. I think this is going to run. Don't you? Seems to me all three stocks got the same sort of thing going on. Show me the money. <laughs> They're all making big revenues and it looks like it's just going to get bigger. We got American Rebel. That is A-R-E-B-W, the warrant for the company. Uh, the company is making a lot of money selling these safes. They started out selling backpacks and coats so that you could conceal your weapons legally in states where it's allowed. And then they started making safes and it's just been big business for them. Then AFFU, they've got that joint venture, that partnership going with Dell Technologies. That is a huge company and I don't know what all they've got going on, but I think maybe the next financial might tell us. Speaking of next financials, DRCR, we know it's going to be big. They've told us they jumped from 3 million to 7 million revenues for a month one month. They were at $100,000 and jumped. Folks, this is going to be a nice one. I think that that chart was beautiful for DRCR. We're catching it on the bounce on the low side, inside the channel on the high side, if that made any sense. Remember folks, I found these by just looking at the charts. It is a form of DD, just looking for charts that look like they're going to break out of that down area and they're starting to push up strong volume you see the smas are about ready to cross throw a channel in there you see it's about ready to come out all of that is dd you don't just have to go to the news due diligence comes from a variety of ways find one that works for you remember the more you know the more you're gonna grow see you folks